Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to see you again. I'm great that you're joining us back on the uh, Pondering Couch. Mm -hmm. And uh, Denzel, I wasn't here on Sunday, but I, I managed to catch up later in the day with your uh, excellent sermon. It was terrific on uh, Acts 14, wasn't it? It was the story yes. of Paul uh, and Barnabas, I yes. think, in, in Lystra and Derby and... Uh, there's this encounter, isn't it, where they, 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 they bring healing mm. and uh, they are uh, mistaken or, or, or named, aren't they, yeah. as, uh, as Greek gods, Hermes and, and Zeus, yes, wasn't they? Yeah. Um, which, which is, uh, I mean, it's quite an amusing story on, on, on one level, but yeah. incredible demonstration of power. But I think, Denzel, there was, I think what I took away, uh, I mean, I found it really helpful. You were, you, what I heard you saying on Sunday was this call to proclaim the gospel, but this call as well that actually the gospel, uh, you've got to contextualise it or you, you, you can't just say, here's this story and I'm going to kind of like sell it to you like, yeah. a, like, a, like a package, yes. um, any which way, but actually there's something about listening and understanding. Mm. And then once you know where the other person's coming from, you can you, you can give them a, a version or a presentation of the gospel yeah. that's more appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I just thought uh, we're coming near to the end of the blessing. Um, I think you've got another one. Yeah, um, we have. Just, yeah. After, but um, just yeah, just been really challenged by in terms of the gospel. I think we uh, we've been speaking a lot with with people about the gospel and, and what it means to be a gospel centered church and what does that message mean. We understand that the gospel message is powerful, um, but I, but I am um, very intrigued in terms of how we share the gospel with people in Selton. Selton is very unique than any other yeah. um, but, uh, town or, or whatever you call Selton. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued about how we share um, the gospel with, with, with individuals, particularly with people who already have their own gods or yeah. already have their own idols, because I, I believe that we all worship something. Yeah. So if we're not worshiping God, we're, we're going to worship something else um, and, and that is a challenge I think that's a, a big challenge and I feel like when people see um, yes the gospel message is powerful as Christians but um, seeing someone who has their own religion or has their own idols has their own things that make them happy uh, we feel like maybe we, we can't share the gospel or, or there's, a, there's a hesitation to, to share the gospel but I'm really intrigued that Paul and Barnabas um, come into this this place full of uh, pagan Gentiles still understand these people even though they have yeah. their own gods and have their own idols and they still need to know about, about yeah. Jesus and it's really challenging me I was speaking um, not to call him out but I was speaking to Mark um, after the service as well and he was even speaking about even other ways in terms of this uh, yeah the heart for the Mormon yeah. community and, yeah. and they are under the Christian umbrella so there are other um, kind of times where we we feel like Maybe they already have the same God, maybe they'll lead to that yeah. God eventually, but actually there is something in, in sharing the gospel in, in, in that way. But again, it's, it's about uh, getting to know people, getting to know their worries, getting to know their struggles, uh, getting to know their idols and their gods, mm -hmm. and, and showing them a, a better way, uh, which is Jesus. Um, and then I kind of spoke about how we need to be living that out as well. Uh, people need to see that we have found a better way, um, which, which is speaks volumes. But I think I was just, just intrigued about um, just the, the gods uh, that people have, or the idols that people have, and, and what does that look like in, in cells, and what are the idols yeah. um, in cells, and that maybe prevents people from coming to, to Jesus, or um, yeah, what are the, yeah, yeah, I think particularly the idols, and I think we were speaking earlier on about just maybe some of the, um, just the wealth. Wealth, yeah. Um, I think that can be, a, I think I spoke to quite a few people who have uh, friends and family who are quite wealthy and uh, they don't, don't see any need to, to come to, yeah. to Jesus because we, we are our own saviors, we, we worked hard, we provided and, and this is it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, when you talk about wealth, you always remind me there's that fascinating passage, I think it's Deuteronomy 8, and mm. uh, the people of Israel are on the verge kind of, it's, yeah. it's one of Moses' last That's prep it. talks before you go into the land and he yeah. says something, doesn't he? Yeah. Like uh, when you arrive and the land is flying with milk and honey, yeah. it's going to be great. But he says something like, "You will say to yourself, I have achieved all this 
by, by my own hand. Yeah. I think, so there is something here, I think, about, I mean, a sense of we want to feel like we've arrived or yeah. we've established ourselves mm. or we've got comfortable. But I know this, there is something about wealth which, which whispers in your ear and says, you've worked hard for yeah. this, you, you deserve this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear quite a few people talk perhaps about things that they have acquired or what they've accumulated yeah. in, in terms of this is fair. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. that I, I have this, which is quite different to scripture, which I think yeah. we speak of everything we have being a blessing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, a sense of comfortability as well, where, where people, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's that comfortable that comfortable state um, that people find themselves in, I think particularly in this area. Um, and that kind of links into the, the whole wealth aspect as well. Um, but I think yeah, I think it's important that we kind of recognise these idols yeah. um, and lovingly. And I, I think I spoke about in the sermon about the struggle of not making us seem that we're better than people, I think mm -hmm. Christians, in how we yeah. share the gospel with people. So there is there is love that needs to be there, and there is relationship that needs to be there. Um, and I think we we spoke earlier on as well in terms of we sometimes think that people are not happy. Yeah, um, yeah. And actually, we need to make people see how miserable their lives are uh, and yeah. show them Jesus. But actually, that's not always the case. Some people are very happy and very they comfortable. Are, yeah. um, so it does take a lot in explaining who God is to, to someone who has it all. And I think we see Jesus, um, obviously, he's with different people. We have Jesus with the, the youngest ruler. Uh, when he comes to him, then he obviously has a lot and basically tells him to, to give it all up and come follow me. Uh, but yeah, there's different ways that we can begin to share. I mean, it's, it, it's fascinating, isn't it? What you've got me thinking about here as well, Denzel, is what, what does freedom look like? Mm. And what does it look for, like for us to model freedom in Christ and, mm. and life to the full? Uh, you know, I, I wonder if sometimes, uh, I mean, I remember coming across a, a magazine not long ago, uh, I think for Christian men, mm. uh, uh, and it had interviews with Christian celebrities and they had gadget reviews and, and yeah. stuff like that. And I remember thinking, I can see what you're trying to yeah. do because it's it was kind of, well, you can be a Christian, yeah. you can be cool, yeah. and yeah. you can still have all these things. And yet it felt to me a little bit like, well, it's just a Jesus go faster yes. strike applied yeah. to, to, to normal life. Yeah. What does it look like to be truly free? And I think, it, is it fair to say maybe one of the other gods or idols of our culture is is this idea of being my my true self mm -hmm. uh, so so deep down inside me there is you know the real trevor who, who mm -hmm. we're supposed to be set free and to retain freedom is mm -hmm. actually to be yeah the freest liberated wow. mm -hmm. uh trevor you, you, mm -hmm. you know who can uh, indulge himself and be liberated mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting? There's something in the Acts uh, accounts, and we see it in, in 14 with Paul and Barnabas and Mr. and Darby. And I'm going to be looking in a couple of weeks' time at, at Athens and the yeah, Areopagus. Yeah, the Creator is spoken about quite a lot. Yeah. There's something yeah. about we are creatures, mm. and it is only being called back to the true Creator who really knows us. Yeah. That we actually find the liberation, yeah. and uh, I just wonder, is that something we need to explore and think mm. about? What, what what does it mean to convey that message of, yeah, come come back to the one who knows you best, absolutely, and who knows the world best? Yeah, I mean that's a hopeful message because uh, despite that, that means despite the, your wealth, despite um, your accolades, or, or everything else that has true meaning to you, it, it still doesn't. It doesn't pull away of who God is. Um, you can have all of those things, and it's great. Um, but actually, you can still have a deeper relationship with your Creator, who created you. Yeah. So there's, there's something far more bigger uh, that people can begin to, to look forward to and, and know right now as well. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Oh, thanks, Denzel. It's been really helpful to reflect on these things. Yeah. You've actually, actually, as we're sitting here, because I'm about to go off. Uh, in a couple of minutes and, and, and start doing some work on, on Acts 16, yeah, yeah. which will be the final blessing text. Yes. And, and, and it may well be that you will see some of the ideas we've discussed uh, yeah. refined. And I think it's, it's really helpful, uh, I mean, just to sit here and talk 
and, and reflect. Mm. Uh, I mean, I don't know if anybody's sitting and watching this and thinking, well, I don't have a chance mm. to reflect in a passage with someone. We've got home groups that meet on a regular basis. Yeah. One of the things you might not know that we do is we are the Green Ministry team, don't we, at the passages we preach on a couple yes. of weeks ahead of them. Yeah. We read them and we have a conversation and we talk about how we preach them. Mm. Then one of us preaches them and then we come back and we have this conversation. But it's mm. just, it's great then to yeah. talk about this with you. Absolutely. I just find it, it, it's so enriching and you get far more out of a passage in conversation with with, Absolutely. with our brothers yeah. and our, yeah. our sisters. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to just hear a sermon and just, that's it, it's gone. But constant conversation, bringing yeah. out more things and then allowing God to continue to speak and challenge us throughout the week. So, Amen. Yeah. So thanks again for joining us. Yeah, and if you do want to find out about a home group uh, or another space where you can talk about passages and you're looking for people to be in conversation with Dennis or myself, we'd be glad to speak with you. Yeah, but we hope that you uh, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday evening. If it is Wednesday evening and when you're watching this, that we'll see you uh, again uh, on Sunday and that you'll, you'll, you'll know God walking Amen. with you and his presence. Uh, in whoever you're sharing life with and sharing the, the Christian message with. God bless. See you soon.